So today I want to share about your minds. It is not for no reason Jesus was crucified in a place called the place of the skull. It is down here, bro. It's got to start here. Amen. Look up here at this, at this verse, verses in 2 Corinthians 10. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Now, the weapons of our spiritual warfare, how many understand as believers, as God's people, we are actually in a war? Now, you say, but Pastor Prince, how come the, some of the people of the world, they don't seem to have the kind of, uh, you know, uh, struggles that we, we, we go through as believers? I'll tell you why. Because they're dead. If you're a hunter and you shoot some birds, and some birds are wounded, and some birds fly away, and some birds are dead, Let's say you got a real fast shooting rifle. <laughs> real successively you shoot. And a few are wounded. A few are dead. A few have flown away. Now, you can't do anything about those that flew away, isn't it? Which one you go first? Wounded or dead? Are uh, you understand? Why the devil is after you? That's life. I said that's life. Amen. Amen. It's a sure sign if you're under attack. It's a sure sign you're born again, man. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And you are in a war. We're in a warfare. But praise be to God, our weapons are not nuclear arsenal. It's not machine gun. It is not bomb. It's not anything physical. It's not something tangible or palpable. It is not carnal, but it's mighty through our God. It's mighty in God for pulling down strongholds. Now, where is this stronghold? Now, for, I, I still remember for the longest time, you know, the body of Christ thought that a stronghold was outside, somewhere in the heavenlies. You know, there was a time, you know, the, the, the people of God actually would go to high skyscrapers and do warfare. It was closer to the heavenlies. Now, the Bible says, though we, we wrestle against these principalities and powers in the heavenlies, the wrestle does not happen in the heavenlies, all right? In fact, the Bible says, put on the whole armor of God, and every piece is the gospel piece. The helmet the hope of salvation. The breastplate of righteousness is what protects your heart from accusation of the enemy. And that righteousness is a gift. Loins girt with the truth, the truth that sets you free. The gospel of peace shoes, the shield of faith, and the sword of the spirit. In other words, if your believing is wrong about the gospel, to that extent, you are exposed. Amen. Our warfare, our, the stronghold of the enemy is not up there in the heavenlies. There was a time before Jesus died the warfare was outside where the prince of Persia would withstand, you know, uh, Gabriel from bringing the messenger, the, the, he was a messenger angel to bring the message to uh, Daniel. But since Jesus died, the prince of this world is cast out of the cosmos. In other words, the devil no longer has that place. Amen. Now, where is the battle now? Where is that the arena? It's in your mind. That's where the devil wants to get you, in your mind. Keep on reading, casting down. Where is this stronghold? Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Amen. Now, it's very clear. God wants you to bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. In other words, you put them all together. Put them all together. And what do you have? You have the stronghold is actually in your mind, in people's minds. That's the stronghold. And our weapons is to pull down that stronghold in the mind. You know, there are all kinds of strongholds. There are people who are depressed in their minds. There are people who are struggling in their minds. There are people who cannot concentrate. They cannot focus. Let's be the new generation. We have iPods, iPads, and what else? You know, and we even text in short form and abbreviations. And we are raising a generation of people who, are, who cannot focus for long. You know, they sit in the car going somewhere, and they say, are we there yet after five minutes? All right, they got to be occupied all the time. Now, it's good to raise our children to sit down, like the Bible says, study to be quiet. <laughs> All right? And, and, and they will go, you know, how many understand God is quiet? God speaks in the still, small voice. There is a rhythm about God's movements. You know, look at nature. It is slow, but it's powerful. It has a rhythm, a rhythm of grace. God is musical, even music. Amen? But urban life is jarring. It is breathless. It is hurried. He restoreth my soul. How? He leads me beside 
the still waters. Amen. So our minds can be like very active. You're sitting down here and you just miss everything I said just now. <laughs> what? What did Pastor Prince just say? All right. Or you cannot focus. So I'll try my best to speak slower in this sermon. Okay, whatever struggles we have, I'm telling you, church, to the extent we're not seeing the gospel being mani- the ben- blessings of the gospel being manifested, the power of God unto salvation.